Okay, we're recording on July 1st, 2006. We're looking at the yearbook from Terrell High School. 1954. Mm -hmm. This is Mr. G.A. Baxter. Right. This is Webster Armstrong. He was one of the first guitar players with the Dizzy Gillespie degree, and he sang. He sounds just like uh, Billy X now. Hmm. I think he might have died about a year before Thomas. Uh, I think so. I think I heard that. Uh, this woman brought a, a, a very expensive diamond, about a carrot filter. Had Orange. a silver carrot because it was a great big diamond ring. She brought it back and gave it to me at the House of Music when I was about 14, something like that. She was supposed to be married to my father. She didn't. That didn't happen. He dished her. Margie Holloway. Mm hmm. Catholic. Catherine Sadler. That was my stepmother. That's right. Her name was Jackson. Her original name was Sadler. Catherine W. Sadler right. Jackson. Cosmetology. Right. Well, the Sadler came from the fact that she was married to Billy Sadler, which was the name of the bar, Billy's Bar. Remember I was telling you about Billy's Bar? Yeah. Where the Air Force went and Charles Scott, and I used to go there and sit in with the mafia and all the people. Mm -hmm. Well, it was her husband who started that bar. No, I'm going to start with Where? Over there? Okay. Yeah, it was her husband. It was named after him. Billy's Bar. And he lost a lot of money gambling and stuff and then moved back to California. Okay, that one I'm gonna read this. Okay. Uh and Kathleen Sadler was teaching cotton. Now if you take another look in that on on, on the same page, mm -hmm. if you kinda notice what was being taught let me, let me let me hear that for a second. Let me show you. I might give you a button quicker idea. All right. Here you have a high school that is teaching uh, English and math, an English history teacher, a uh, metal shop auto mechanic, English again, a civic teacher, uh, distribution education. You have Miss Transvan, who was the one who taught everybody uh, chord chords and harmony, uh, taught harmony and theory. Mm -hmm. uh, who was very good. You have Knox Tucker, who was one of the coaches. This man here, name was Qual. He was the head football coach. He's the one who was living in my father's apartment and came and told my father, that, you know, because he wanted me to play for He knew I could play. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to play. You know. If you go to these things, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, history and athletic management. What is athletic management? What is, uh, Miss, his wife was teaching, uh, bless her, homemaking. How to wash an iron and cook? Well, oh, home, Mac. Uh, okay, well, uh, my sisters took that. Yeah, my mother took it too down in Prairie View and came back home and told my grandfather to save his money because she already knew how to iron, wash an iron and cook. <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm just telling you the way she told she told me. I mean, I could I couldn't make that up. Uh -huh. You know, um, here's Mrs. Dwan T. Bennett. He taught radio and television repair. Uh, uh, here's uh, Leonard Hippie, he taught shoe repair and leather craft, okay? So they're teaching a lot of trades. That's my point. Yeah. That's my point. Uh, uh, the trades, I think, outnumber the actual uh, courses that could actually, I mean, Mr. Webster Armstrong was my biology teacher, so I just captured a snake and built a cage and took it to school. <laughs> you know? uh, that was it on that, but... Uh, there's Miss Ali. Oh, she was. Now these. It was a strange situation. If you if you look at what we were uh, actually being taught, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to what's going on now. Even my stepmother taught cosmetology. What's cosmetology? Hairdressing, beautician. That's what my aunt made. The other aunt Mary made the money off of. Mm -hmm. And she ain't been to nobody college. She went to Madam Walker. Uh, learned that Madam Walker hair burning technique in those days. And, that was a big deal, you know, the movies you were influencing. You know, they had uh, uh, black movies at those times. Another thing, at this time period, those in that early time period, I was talking to Mickey Bass the other night, and he was running, running off all the people come out of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. It's not just ones, uh, ones that I had. I had not...
John, uh, Josh Gibson, the baseball player, right? Mm -hmm. Beaver Harris is from there. Sonny Clark is from there. Cal Massey is from there. Alma Jamal is from there. Uh, um, Kenny, Kenny Clark is from there. Billy Strayhorn. Billy Strayhorn is from there. Ramon Morris. Henry Mancini. Eddie Safransky, the bass player who was playing with Stan Kenton. My boss, Neil Slater, is from there. Neil Slater. <laughs> <laughs> and you had this Crawford Grill, which was owned by this man, uh, 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 Gus Greenlee. Well, Gus Greenlee owned uh, uh, the control instance of the Pittsburgh, uh, what do you call it, base, uh, the Pittsburgh, base, the Crawford, uh, Pittsburgh uh, baseball team. And they own you know, interest in that P Pittsburgh Courier newspaper, which was the blackest, new, biggest black, it was the uh, New York Times of the black uh, community, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, what made that so significant was that at the same time, A. Philip Randall was head of the uh, train car union, Porter's car union, and that's how they distributed papers to all the black communities through the railroad system. Not mm -hmm. telling the railroad people that, though, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's how they all, and so you had this whole chilling circuit hookup. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, that was that part there. So now let's go to your question. Well, I have, I printed out the emails that you sent me mm -hmm. where you had remembered more people. Right. These are some of the people who might have been playing in Greenway Park. Uh, all right, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I see, Mike, because I don't know, you know, you would have to take the age and all the other things in consideration, but a lot of them cats were... Now, I just want to, I'm going to say them so they're going to be on the tape, but there was one name you put yes afterwards. Red Connor, tenor sax. Gene Montgomery, tenor sax. Jesse Booker, drums. King Curtis Owsley, tenor sax. And G, guitar, too? Yeah. Charles Diddy Moffat, drums. He played guitar. He played guitar? play guitar? Mm -hmm, he play. Benny White, guitar. Ben he Martin. Wrote, also wrote with him. Okay. Ben Martin, alto sax. Truvenza Coleman, yes, vocal and trombone. On his sister. On his sister. Older yeah. sister. Ben Martin, alto sax. Darnell Coles, drums. At 14 years old, he was working with the uh, J. Mac Shan band, the one with Charlie Parker wow. and, and, this, and touring the whole whole Chitlin country, the whole country doing that. By the time he was 16 or 17, 18, he was out there in the Fed Prim prison with that fellow Stymie, who used to be on Little Rascals. Mm -hmm. They were partners. When he'd get out... <sighs> It was like a, a, a holiday, because wherever, he showed up at the Zanzibar, and you and, and he like blocked traffic, a traffic jam. Mm -hmm. Him and Ben Martin had gotten out at the same time one time. I happened to be there. <laughs> like Greenway Park doubled, <laughs> because how, he had the situation. For some reason, they allowed him to have his drums there, and he practiced mm -hmm. the whole time he was in the joint. So when he come out, the way he'd be playing, man, was just, uh, it, it was indescribable. Mm -hmm. uh, what you would hear, and we're talking about a snare drum, a bass, mm -hmm. a bass drum, and one cymbal. And maybe a sock, maybe a sock cymbal. But the shit would be so, so swinging. I mean, that's, really, and people just knew to be there. You know, it was like mm -hmm. grapevine information. Boom. Mm -hmm. uh, these cats are showing up. Uh, they're going to be playing at Zanzibar. Well, Zanzibar was two houses down from the house that I uh, grew up in down on Rosedale. And I can show you the building's still there. Still, I think it still has a Zanzibar sign on it. Hmm. Yeah, we should go see that. And then uh, Caddy Corner down the street was the China Doll, which was the first place I saw Annette and, uh, Don, and Don Cherry when they stopped through here on their migration to New York City. I heard about them, mm -hmm. you know, but I didn't know anything about them. And, and Thomas took me down there, and we stood up behind the bushes and watched, you know. It was just, you know, like, like any other kids, fans about, you know, somebody, all, all the folks were talking about, you know, uh, person with a big name from out, you know, Fort Worth, you know. Mm -hmm. So people had pride, uh, enormous pride in it, like Joe Lewis. Uh, uh, oh, somebody actually, you can make it. You know, that, that was the repercussion of you can make it. Now, what happened after that is a different story, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Marcus Aurelius Hemphill. Julius is uh, 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 uncle. He had BS. Is that bass? He was a bass player, and he was a playwright. He was a play wrote plays and stuff out there in mm -hmm. California. He moved to California. Willie Cranshaw, trumpet. 
Now, I don't know if Fig Newton actually played. I know he was around. <laughs> Webster Armstrong, you just pointed him out. Right. Guitar and vocal. Mm -hmm. James Jordan, baritone sax. Uh, I don't know if James played over there. I know he did play baritone tone saxophone. I know he did play around here with Truvenza and other people. And right now he's managing, he's still managing on that. That's on his cousin. James Jordan? He's on his cousin, right. And he's managing? Been managing Arnett ever since uh, uh, the, about two years after Arnett got in New York. Wow. He's Arnett's cousin, uh, a close cousin, and he is uh, runs the New York Council of the Arts. Has been for a long time. Used to be on the uh, National Endowment of the Arts mm -hmm. for a long time until uh, Reagan came in. Fascinating. There's another story you wrote in the email about third grade at James E. Gwynn Elementary School. They came around and asked uh, to, to each classroom, obviously, and asked those who had a piano in, the, in their homes to raise their hand. So naturally, I raised mine. You know, the people in, I don't know how long, maybe a week, maybe two weeks, maybe, I'm not sure. But I know next thing, within a short period of time, they, all, they came back around and all, everybody who had raised their hand and given their name, they called us out of the classroom. And they had gotten, that was when they started getting these uh, mobile home, you know, add-on uh, classrooms, mm -hmm. you know, because they, they ran out of building space. Mm -hmm. Uh, but like it, was, it wasn't a mobile home, it was like one of them uh, house, you know, movable houses. And so we went there and uh, we were uh, asked to be in the band. And the band director was uh, uh, John Carter, who was about, who I, I think was about 19 then, who had graduated from Lincoln University. Is that John Carter, the clarinet player? That's exactly who it is. Castles of Ghana, who wrote that piece? Right, right, on? right. I had it, but somebody took the, left the cover, but took the CD, the DVD, I mean CD, right. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, uh, and the next time I meet him, all right, that's only that uh, that year because I think it cha he changed. He left after that year and, and went to California or something. He moved on. He was young. But he started that, and uh, he wanted, he gave me the clarinet. He wanted me to play clarinet. Well, I didn't. I didn't want to play clarinet. Uh, it never had interest in me. I really never was, never have been really thrilled by the sound of itself for some of the things that Duke Ellington orchestrated, and make it stand out like when at high range. But it's, mm -hmm. it wasn't one that appealed to me. Uh, so the first time the drummer missed coming, missed the band practice. I had it, and then on, mm. and that was it. And uh, the next time I ran into John Carter was 1980 in Merz, Germany. Uh, he and Bobby, uh, uh, Trump, Bobby Bradford had played on the jazz festival the day before. So the, uh, 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 the van came around to pick, uh, uh, we have them small mini buses. We call them van, they buses, like buses, oh, that's a whole more people, and pick us up. To take us to the festival, it was uh, uh, James Blood on guitar and singing, uh, Amin Ali on uh, electric bass, and David Merriton on saxophone, and myself playing drums, a quartet. And I, I, uh, I don't know if you ever heard the record No Wave. I was going to let you uh, take that with you. You probably never heard it. I haven't heard it. Uh, anyway, this was 1980. We get in, we get in this uh, 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 bus to take us to the festival. And as soon as we climb in, these two dudes are standing there, and, and, and uh, the driver know they're musicians. They ask, could they get a ride over to, uh, to the festival? Because they know we, they, we were going right straight around to the stage. We ain't going to the, you know, come through the gates or nothing like that. We're going around and come through the stage, you know, to, to the dress rooms. And they and everybody, they knew it. So uh, we didn't sit in the van, and, and, and uh, Blood's sitting up there in the front seat, and, he, and we and him are hooroing, because we were already hooroing, because he's St. Catherine, South Carolina. You know, and uh, playing mother with, but he, you know, he said, so, oh, you jive mother from mm, Texas ass, so and so. And so, uh, 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 John Carter said next to me, he said, uh, are you from Texas? I said, yeah, yeah, I'm from, I'm from, uh, from Fort Worth. He said, oh, I'm from Fort Worth, too. <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, uh, he introduced himself, he said, I'm John Carter. 
But it's not until I take a good look that I realize this is Mr. Carter. Because as a kid, you don't know the person as John Carter. Mm -hmm. uh, at no, and once more, we know you as John Murphy. You know, as as as, a, as, as students of yours, they know you as Mr. Murphy. Mm -hmm. Well, when I saw him uh, in the third grade, he was Mr. Carter, and I hadn't seen him since. So here, it's very new your whole situation. Your whole means uh, things are not uh, totally coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh, and we ride to the festival and we re reestablish contact because at that point he was out there at the University of, of uh, Southern Cal. Right, next. <laughs>